and today we are talking about corruption in Africa. Transparency International has released a new global corruption index that tracks perceptions of corruption in 180 countries. The report reveals that the performance of countries in sub-Saharan Africa paints a bleak picture of inaction against corruption. My colleague Paul Ndiho has more on the story. As world leaders are gathered with billionaire executives at the recent concluded economic forum in Davos, Switzerland, tens of thousands of people demonstrated in cities around the world, demanding that action be taken to tackle growing inequality and corruption. A new report released by Transparency International highlights the scale of the problem. The annual Corruption Perception Index states that are winning the fight against corruption continues to be an uphill battle for sub-Saharan African nations. With a score of 66, the Seychelles under the highest mark in the region, followed by Botswana at 61, Cape Verde 58, Rwanda 53, and Mauritius 52. Not surprising are the countries that are at the bottom of the index. Somalia 9, South Sudan 12, Sudan 16, and Equatorial Guinea at 16 as well. A majority of citizens are surveyed in more than 35 African countries think that corruption is getting worse and that their government is doing a poor job of fighting the vice. Those people with a lot of wealth, they also have access to power, privilege, influence of our democracy and how we live our lives today. Angola is waging a fight in its battle against corruption. The nation's judiciary is investigating billionaire Isabel Dos Santos over alleged mismanagement and misappropriation of funds. While she was chairwoman of the state oil firm Sonongo, her bank accounts and assets in her home country have been frozen and the nation's chief prosecutor says authorities could issue an international arrest warrant if she fails to cooperate in a corruption probe in which she has been named as a suspect. Ms. Dos Santos denies any wrongdoing and says the allegations are politically motivated. Well, the allegations are, are false. Um, unfortunately, we were not given the opportunity to present our evidence or to defend ourselves. We were not aware of any such proceedings. Um, we were not summoned. We never received any notices. I've never received a summons. My directors never received any summons or notices. So these proceedings were very much held in secrecy. We don't know exactly what are the accusations. But from what we've heard so far, um, we can say that the, you know, the allegations are false allegations. Isabel Dos Santos' father, Jose Eduardo Dos Santos, ruled the oil-rich but impoverished the country for nearly 40 years. The International Consortium of Investigative Journalists obtained more than 715,000 documents pertaining to Isabel Dos Santos. Stalking flesh claims that she siphoned off hundreds of millions of dollars in public money. There's still a lot of stuff to come up, and I hope that it does, because Isabel is not the only one who's guilty. In a separate investigation, the anti-corruption NGO Global Witness has discovered the apparent theft of more than $50 million in public funds from the Republic of Congo by Dennis Kiki Sasongweso, the son of the current president, Dennis Sasongweso. The report alleges that he laundered millions through six European countries. Kiki Sasongweso is denying all allegations of wrongdoing. Meanwhile, Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta has made fighting graft his number one issue, but critics say he has been slow to pursue top officials. No high-profile convictions have occurred since he took office. Widespread corruption continues to hinder development and disproportionately affects Africa's poorest citizens, who many times have to pay bribes to access public services. Paul Liho, VOA News.